Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be solving a problem for all of you resin artists out there and which is the best method to get rid of drips when you are working with resin. So I'm going to be trying three different techniques that you know I've heard of. Two of them I've not even tried before because I've always just taped. So I'm going to be trying three different techniques and telling you which I think is the best to prevent drips when you are working with resin. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I love to post tons of videos to do with resin, art, DIY, crafts, all of that. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. So let's get into it. So the first method that we're going to be trying that will stop resin drips is just the taping method. I think this is probably like the most common. So there's a few simple steps for this. I'm just using tape. Most of the time I do double it up just so I've got a bit of extra, like I guess, strength with it. Now don't worry too much if you're going over your edges because I always just go back along and like cut them off. This method obviously works the best when you're using like a square or a rectangle because that way you don't have to do the extra step of going back through and like cutting it down. So just placing it along anywhere that the resin's going to go. So because I'm only going to be doing the top part of this chopping board, I don't need to do it the whole way down. Then just press it down really firmly and I just go along with a pair of scissors and just cut right along that edge. You don't want to leave any sort of flap or any area where the resin can kind of sit and create like a little shelf because the resin will slowly then like seep under your tape. So if you are going to do this, you have to cut it back so that way it's nice and tight towards the board. If you leave little bits, you're just going to get that overhang and a place where the resin can slowly get under your tape. What I also do is just puncture a hole through that part so that way I've got a little drainage hole so that way the resin doesn't just sit in there and block it up because I do like to keep that hole because it's great if you want to hang it up. And then I'm also going to tape across here just because I want a straight line. Something important to remember if you are gonna be using this technique is you need to take the tape off once the resin has gelled and stop dripping. Otherwise the resin is going to set your tape into place and actually act as a glue and you'll have a really hard time getting it off if you leave it to fully set. Like you can get it off but you can't just peel it off, it's a lot harder. So if you are going to do this method just make sure that you do set an alarm and that way you don't forget because I have forgotten before and come back the next day, forgot that I left my tape on and it's so much more effort trying to get your tape off the bottom of your board once your resin has glued it into place. But it is a pretty effective method. I don't have really any resin where it shouldn't be. Like there's a little bit of pooling on the edges but not too much, like nothing that's gonna stop this from sitting flat. But it is that extra step. And also sometimes too, see how like you've got that mark where the tape's been? I generally have to give that a little bit of a varnish and get that going. But you do get really nice, beautiful, straight, clean lines when you do do it this way. But the downside to it is that you can leave marks and also you have to remember to take it off.
The next method that I'm going to be trying is latex. I've never used this before. I have worked with latex previously when I used to do special effects makeup because I used to be a makeup artist. Um, I kind of understand how it works and I'm going to be doing it to do a top coat on this piece. I um, do a lot of like preserving like flowers in resin and I always hate doing top coats because when I tape it off, I like no matter how well I manage to tape it, it still always manages like just one little area or if I peel the tape off that little bit too soon and it's still got that one little bit that's dripping, you just get that one little drop and it just drives me nuts because then I've got to sand it back and start again. And I'll show you what I mean if it's going to focus. See how there's just that one little drop there. So I have top coated this and I did, you know, poured it all over and I thought I took the tape off at the perfect time and just that one little drop and that just drives me nuts. So hopefully because you leave the latex on until the resin set and then you take it off once the resin set. So hopefully this method will be really effective for pieces like this um, where you're doing a top coat and you just don't want to get those little drips because that just really annoys me, that one little drop. And because these are clients' pieces, I want them to be like perfect. So normally I'd have to go back and sand and do all that. So we're going to be doing this. I am going to be using this latex. I think I just bought it off eBay or Amazon. Um, nothing special because latex is pretty much the same throughout all the brands. I'm going to be applying it with just some paper towel. You can use a paintbrush if you want to or a sponge. The thing is latex will ruin your paintbrushes so don't use anything that you want to use again because it's just going to get in those hair and set really far so only use something you can chuck out afterwards. This is the bottom of my piece and I'm just going to apply my latex all over with just a little bit of paper towel. This is the bottom of my piece. I'm going to apply my latex all over with just a paper towel. Nothing fancy. You do need to apply it a little bit thick, so whether that's wherever you go around in a few times. And just up to the edge. I just got like, do you know when you smell something and you kind of get like deja vu, a bit of a flashback? So when I used to do a lot of like special effects makeup, I just got like a flashback to that from the smell of the latex because it is quite like fumey. And once again, you don't need to apply it the whole way in. Save, save some latex, uh, just because the resin's not gonna drip the whole way in. It's only gonna drip on the outer edges. So don't feel like that's something you've gotta do. I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna probably do a second to maybe third coat, depending on how thick it dries. I've got three layers down now of the latex and I'm just going to pour my top coat of resin. Okay, so this piece has now dried. So it's got quite a few drips on it. So hopefully this worked. I'm going to peel back the latex. Oh my God, it's coming off. It's actually coming off really easily. Um, I did do the latex, like as you saw, like a few layers, so quite like thick. Oh wait, that was the original drip, wasn't it? <laughs> So that's actually worked out really well. I do have like a few slight rough edges, um, but I think if I just give that a real like light sanding, but other than just the few rough edges, just there and there, I think it's a really good option. 
yeah, so I definitely use that again. I think the thing you just got to be careful is getting the latex exactly where you want it. But yeah, now all I've got to do is just sand back those edges a bit and that looks really good. Okay guys, so the last one we're gonna do is the Vaseline method on this chopping board. So it's been scratched and it just needs to be fixed by doing a second top coat. So I'm gonna put the Vaseline around. Now, mind you, the Vaseline that I did find is so old because really, what do you use Vaseline for? Um, it's still like, not like, I thought it would have hardened, but yeah, no, it's still the same. So I'm gonna just put this all around and I'm gonna do like a quite like globular, I guess is the best way, like a decent coating. Um, just cause I feel like it's gonna be a little bit of the same, like um, the latex, that the latex won't work if you put it on too thin. So I'm gonna put it on like quite thickly So I feel like that's like a really, if you guys can see, it's overcast here today. So sorry if the lighting's not like crazy bright. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put it across this top part as well. Okay, so I feel like that's nice and thick. I've just mixed up some more resin. And I'm just gonna do a top coat. Okay guys, so this has been left overnight and it is the moment of truth. Maybe I'll do the back first. So, this is the one that's been covered in Vaseline and that did just pop straight off. It's so gooey. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get a paper towel. You do, are left with like a little bit of like a sharpness just on like that edge. So you definitely have to sand that back and um, get all this Vaseline off, but it, it did work. Like that's coming off just as easy as the latex did. So yeah, that is working quite well actually. They're all just coming off. Oh, okay, these ones are a bit stuck. Oh no, no once you get underneath. So that's good to know that like Vaseline, I think because it's just so greasy, it just doesn't give the resin anything to stick to because resin needs something to stick to. Like that's why it doesn't stick to plastic or silicone because they're too slick of a surface. I will say like, I'm getting all this, um. Vaseline off is a bit of effort. I think I prefer the latex the best, but the Vaseline's probably a really cheap option because let's face it, Vaseline is a lot cheaper than latex. Um, but I just think the edges that you get left with the latex is just a bit more cleaner than the Vaseline. And you're also not getting Vaseline all over your hands. Now let's see if it works here because because I did a top coat and it's poured over my edge here and I'm wondering whether it's good with just little drips but it's not going to be great to get a big piece. Oh, no, it's lifting. It's not stuck. Hold up, here we go. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know if the Vaseline is like amazing for the top because I'm not able, like it's lifting, but it's, it's leaving a super messy edge. And now it's just ripped up that like little layer of resin. So now that would have to be like sanded and polished back, which is not what you want when you do a top coat. So like, it didn't stick to the wood, even with the resin being so thick. 
but it's left a really just not a perfectly clean line. So I think if you were gonna do the Vaseline, it would work great on like artworks, but maybe not so much on chopping boards where you have to have like that edge. Um, but you could definitely use it if you were doing a chopping board that was a free flowing edge. But yeah, I feel like that doesn't look amazing. So, which is always good to know. And I reckon like if you were doing like a big artwork and there's no edge to it, Vaseline would be perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching that. I was really surprised by the latex and I liked it more than I thought I would. And it's definitely something that I'm gonna continue in as well as the other two methods as they work just as good. Um, but yeah, I was super surprised. Let me know in the comments below which method you like to use. I'm really intrigued. And or if you know another method for stopping drips, like pop it down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up as it really does help me out helps me out and lets YouTube know to show this to more people. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I love to do lots of resin, art, crafts, DIY projects, everything in the creative atmosphere. And I hope everyone is staying safe during these times. And I hope this brought a little bit of joy and a bit of entertainment to keep you busy. And yeah, so if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe.